At EPIC, we have four different types of 3D printing technology. The one you may be most familiar with is Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM. We have FDM printers from Stratasys and MakerGear. An FDM printer extrudes a thermoplastic filament through a brass or stainless steel nozzle onto a build platform or print bed. In some printers, the print head moves in X and Y, and the bed moves in Z. In other printers, the print head may move in X, and the build plate move in Y and Z. The printers use a lead screw to move in Z, and belts to move in X and Y. The print bed may be made of disposable plastic, aluminum, glass, or a flexible magnetic sheet. The number one issue with FDM printing is warping. The bed and often the enclosure are heated to keep the part at a uniform temperature and reduce warping. FDM printers work well for large parts that do not require the best dimensional accuracy, parts that need ABS or PLA, and for parts which need a dissolvable support material. Our Stratasys machines have dual print heads, which can only be set up to print ABS and a dissolvable support material. Our Maker Gear printers have one print head, so if your part needs a support structure to print, then snap off supports can be added in the slicing software. The second most popular 3D printing technology is stereolithography, or SLA. We have Form Labs printers at Epic. SLA printers use a photopolymer which starts out as a liquid and cures when exposed to UV light from a laser. The resolution of the print is determined by the laser but also the polymer being used. SLA printers use a heated tank to hold the resin supply and the laser moves below the tank to cure one layer at a time. The parts print upside down off a suspended aluminum build plate and are peeled off the base of the resin tank after each layer is printed. These printers also use a lead screw to move the build plate in Z, but the XY motion varies between models of printer. The Form 2 uses two galvanometers and a stationary mirror to move the laser across the bottom of the resin tank. The Form 3 is actually a low-force stereolithography or LFS printer. And the difference is in how the laser is moved in X and Y. Because each layer printed on the Form 2 adheres to both the base of the resin tank and the previous layer of the print, there can be high peel forces on the part when that layer has a large surface area. The Form 2 LFS printer physically moves its laser processing unit, or LPU, in the X direction and uses one galvanometer and two mirrors in the Y direction. The resin tank also employs a flexible base, so a series of low force peels are performed as the LPU moves. The lower peel forces increase success with large volume prints and allow you to use smaller support points. SLA and LFS printers are best used for parts where you need higher accuracy than FDM or you need the material properties associated with the resins available, but the parts will require snap-off supports. Polyjet or multi-jet technology is a high-end printing method known for producing very accurate or full-color models. The polyjet printer we have at Epic is from Stratasys and is called an object. The jetting technology dispenses a photopolymer and a support material with two print heads that look similar to what you might see on an inkjet printer. The printed layers are then cured with UV light. Polyjet printers have high precision, but our particular printer has limited applications because the support is not dissolvable and the liquid jetting process requires every layer to be completely supported. The object is best used for parts which require minimal to no support, are very small, or need to have glossy smooth surfaces like two-part molds.
The last type of Prinzig technology at EPIC is our Selective Laser Melting, or SLM, metal printer. The metal printer was a donation from GE and Concept Laser. SLM printers use a laser to melt metal powder to form solid metal prints. The process requires an inert atmosphere and significant safety precautions. Our metal printer uses stainless steel metal powder, so the print bed as well as the supports are all in stainless steel. Parts must be able to dissipate heat or you will run into problems with warping. Due to the high costs associated with running an SLM printer, this printer is not available for print requests and is used exclusively in our additive manufacturing courses. In these courses, students learn how to optimize designs for 3D printing. Design for metal printing allows you to reduce the weight of traditionally fabricated parts while maintaining the strength required. The preferred method to add threads is to use a threaded metal insert pressed into your part. When working with thermoplastics, like ABS and PLA, you can press in a heat set insert using a soldering iron. When you need to design in custom threads, the layer height determines how small the threads can be. In FDM printing, the layer height is determined in part by the nozzle size. For our Stratasys printers, it is fixed at 0.254 millimeters. The Maker Gear printers have a swappable nozzle, and the layer height can range from 0.02 millimeter to 0.35 millimeter. For SLA printing, you have the choice of 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0 0.025 millimeter. And for polyjet printing, the layer height is fixed at 0 0.025 millimeter. When you use a smaller layer height, the print time will increase significantly. Because of the lower accuracy, FDM will be sufficient for large threads but SLA is a better choice for small threads. Tapping and sectioning 3D parts is challenging and often not recommended. If you cannot use a threaded insert, make sure the print is dense and tough enough that you can successfully tap the part. We suggest using the tough resin from Forb Labs if you wish to add a threaded hole. And while you can lightly sand 3D parts, we do not recommend sectioning 3D printed parts. Orientation of the print also affects the accuracy of the print. In FDM printing, you typically orient the part to reduce support usage and optimize critical features. For example, if you are printing a threaded part, you want the threads to be parallel to the build plate so that each thread is part of a continuous layer. If you print the threads perpendicular to the build plate, you will have more success. If you remove the threads, that will not be part of a wire surface layer. Because FDM printers use a lead screw to move vertically and belts to move horizontally, they have better vertical resolution than horizontal. This means if you want to print a detail like text or a movable hinge, it will look and function better if it is printed vertically than horizontally. When you're designing a part for 3D printing, you want to be mindful of the limitations and cost associated with additive manufacturing that differ from subtractive manufacturing. In general, if the part can be made with subtractive manufacturing or assembly of off-the-shelf parts, both the job cost and time will be lower and the part can be made with superior tolerances. Because of the advantages of traditional manufacturing, 3D printing often only makes sense if your design is truly innovative and optimized for 3D printing, or you're in the design phase and making a series of prototypes. There are several key design features which will need to be tuned to the 3D printing technology you choose to use. Overhangs and supports, wall thickness, shrinkage and warping, file resolution, minimum hole diameter, minimum clearance, maximum horizontal support span, minimum emboss and engrave details. We recommend looking up the recommended values for these design features on the printer manufacturer's website, but we'll go over some general recommendations here. 
overhangs may not exceed 45 degrees or they will require support. You can redesign your circular shapes to look more like a teardrop at the top of the curve. This allows the part to be printed without support at the center. Recommended wall thickness varies with printer technology, but in general, we don't recommend anything less than 0.5 millimeter for photopolymers and 0.8 millimeter for thermoplastics. Keep in mind, thin material will be fragile and more prone to warping and flexing unless it is designed with short spans. When parts are oriented for printing, supports are added to minimize shrinkage and warping. So while you may wish to reduce supports as much as possible to improve surface quality or reduce print costs and time, this may lead to a damaged part. Large flat surfaces flat on the print bed in FDM are prone to shrinkage as they cool and the corners may peel off of the build plate. The heated bed reduces this risk but rafts and texture or adhesive surfaces also help the part to remain flat. You can also swap sharp corners for curves in your design to reduce the chance of warping. Both temperature changes and mechanical forces exerted on the part while printing can cause deformation. Additionally, SLA parts may experience warping during the washing and post-carrying process. Designing in CAD allows you to design perfectly smooth curves and precise surfaces. 3D printers require an SDL file, which is an approximation of your CAD model, translated to a mesh of triangles. The surfaces in the SDL must be completely closed to create a printable volume. When exporting your design, choose binary for lower file size. You have to make sure you are not losing too much detail and not including too much either. If there is too little detail, your parts will not have smooth surfaces. If there is too much detail, the printer software may not be able to process your file. When the STL is imported into the slicing software, we can orient the part, set up the supports, and input other settings like infill percentage, print speed, and layer height. The slicer then breaks down the polygon mesh into a series of 2D layers for the printers to fabricate and exports to a custom G-code file specific to the printer we are using. When printing at Epic, we will calculate the cost associated with your print. This is only a calculation of our material cost based on the volume of material the software estimates that your part will use. So it is not the true cost of manufacturing a part with a 3D printer. For an example of cost, a series of small parts that total one cubic inch volume cost $18 to print in ABS on our FDM printer with dissolvable support. And those same parts printed in SLA with standard resin cost $8. If these parts were injection molded, the material cost would be a few pennies, but there is an upfront cost associated with the production of the mold. So injection molding is not practical for a prototype, but ideal for mass production. When you have optimized your design and are ready to print, you could submit your request to our web form. Be sure to include your files in SCL format and keep in mind that 3D printing is a slow process. Our queue is first come, first serve, so send in your requests as early as you can.